My name is Jan Freitag, Senior Vice President with STR, a CoStar Group company. And today I want to discuss with you the US weekly performance results for the week ending August the 29th. Let's start this week the same way we started last week with a comment on a drop in occupancy two weeks ago. The occupancy was 50 percent. This last week it was 48.8 percent and this week unfortunately it was 48 point two percent and that is all before labor day we're very very curious to see what happens once labor day comes and goes and people stay a little bit closer to home the weekend occupancy also declined from 57 percent to 55 percent i'm not sure that that number is going to drop very much we have heard anecdotes about people taking longer weekend trips just because they can work virtually and because their kids school is also virtual so it doesn't really matter where they are and hopefully that could be a well-needed boost for the weekend occupancies in beach and mountain destinations the occupancy decline of course is a function of room demand declining and we already saw a preview of that when we looked at the tsa data so as most of you know the tsa publishes their accounts on Monday, and we saw that for that week ending the 29th, TSA accounts declined by 5% or so, and that then was sort of an early indicator that the weekly room demand data would come in negative as well. And indeed, we saw a room demand decline of 230,000 rooms. That translates to a decline in demand of 1.3%. You see that the long-run average over the last nine weeks is now basically just around one percent or so week over week over week growth that of course is not great as i said especially as we get into the third quarter that traditionally has strong business travel numbers and we're not sure that those business travel numbers will actually materialize the rev par percent change continues to tick up slightly but surely and last week rev par declined week over week compared to the same week last year by 44.5%, and that is the best result we had seen for a long, long, long time. You see that the number of new COVID cases is now also just below 300,000. This curve, the red curve, is of course a good curve to monitor, and we hope that we will continue to see better numbers coming out of our world in data and the CDC. The occupancy declines that we mentioned for the nation, of course, were visible for all classes. So each individual class lost occupancy points compared to the prior week, August the 22nd. That said, the patterns we had observed for the last couple of months continue to hold that the lower rate at the lower ADR types properties see a higher occupancy. Which markets did well, not a big surprise. Jersey Shore, California, McAllen, Texas continue to show high occupancies. We're adding this week Louisiana North because, of course, Hurricane Laura displaced a lot of people that drove up the occupancy. On the other side, you see that the Hawaiian Islands still struggle with occupancies of well below 30%. We updated our global closure chart and overlaid here now the global occupancy. And it's good to see that as occupancy increases, of course, more hotels open as owners feel that they have break even occupancy in their specific market, in their specific country, they are ready to do business again. The occupancy line you see here is sort of plateauing a little bit, but keep in mind, of course, that that is also a function of more rooms being open. So we're a little bit a victim of our own success as we drive higher demand, as we drive higher occupancy, then more rooms are opening that are currently closed, which then depresses the occupancy. But I think overall, this is a good picture. That said, when we look at the three areas that we cover more closely, China, Europe and the US, you see that for all three areas, the occupancy last week actually declined or stayed steady. You see that China occupancy decreased from 67% just to 65%. We already talked about the US being below 50 and you see that Europe sort of plateaued out at 44%. And of course, vacation season in Europe, which is basically August is ending and Labor Day in the United States looms large. So we'll monitor this very, very closely going forward. Lastly, I had shown in the last couple of weeks charts that compare total room inventory and standard 
supply and occupancy methodology. I finally wrote this up and our friends from Hotel News Now published this in an article. So if you want to do a little bit deeper dive or if you have any more questions about this specific topic, TRI versus standard occupancy, please have a look at hotelnewsnow.com. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you a good long Labor Day weekend. Go out, stay in a hotel, and when you do, please wear your mask. I'll see you next week. Until then, I wish you well. I wish you health.